Rolando Antonio, as I said, introduce your nickname. Just to clarify, the humanity of Jesus Christ is permanent? Yes. Uh, that is clearly revealed in the, the scriptures, in the book of Hebrews, uh, that he continues forever in his priestly ministry, uh, which is parallel to human priests. But this man, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. So yes, that his humanity is permanent. He has not removed that humanity. And remember, the resurrection retains that humanity. He's not spiritual in the sense of having done away with the body. He will forever be God-man. But we will have to study that more when we come in due course to the subject of the humanity of Jesus. Other questions? Good morning, Pastor Noel. Uh, my name is Erwin from Living Hope Christian Fellowship. Uh, I have a question about the uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse um, 20, 27, about the, so God created man in his own image. Uh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, 26. 26, yeah, 26, because uh, God said that, that let us make man in our own image in after our likeness. Uh, my question is, is this uh, talking about uh, Jesus also in, and also in John chapter 1, verse 1? Well, one thing that we can say is that Jesus was present at creation and therefore present at this uh, statement of intention by God. Uh, let us make man in our image, but be careful not to see in Genesis 1.26 immediately a proof of the Trinity. Uh, we must, as I've said, begin with exegesis. Uh, exegesis means understanding the text in its time. And at the time it was written, there would have been no idea of the Trinity because that would be a New Testament revelation. But now that we have the New Testament, we can read back uh, into this and know that Jesus was there at the intention to create man. In fact, he was there at the creation of everything, John 1, 3 tells us. But what I'm saying is you do not derive the Trinitarian doctrine out of such plural uh, references and conclude. Uh, they may be corroborative but not conclusive of the Trinity from Ian or from SRBC Isabella. Are we going to choose between Jewish and Christian view or is it okay to use both? You cannot use both because they are uh, not the same. The Jews did not, did not accept the Messiah to be divine. Uh, they believe that the Messiah would be once sent by God, but not God himself. And it was a reading in a Christian way that they had to reinterpret the Old Testament. So you decide, you want to be a Jew or you want to be a Christian. Uh, you cannot be both in terms of what you believe about Jesus Christ. So the Jewish reading they did not accommodate a divine Messiah. Uh, but the Christian reading, because they encountered Jesus, uh, they saw some references that they would not naturally, uh, the Jews would not naturally uh, relate to the Messiah, but uh, the Christian would have no problem attributing divinity, divine references in the Old Testament, such as the Malachiawe, to Jesus. Mon. Hi, Pastor. Uh, just a clarification uh, when the disciples. Uh, revisit the Old Testament scripture in a Christian lens, reading the Messianic prophecy using the Malkut uh, Yahweh. Uh, when they write the New Testament uh, using the, the Greek word uh, Agilos Kurios or Angel of the Lord, did they mean the same or it's different? They would have uh, ascribed to Jesus what in the Old Testament was, and we will see that in fact when we will study 
the deity of Christ, references in the Old Testament that pertain to Yahweh directly, the New Testament writers, the apostles, did not, did not have any uh, qualms of attributing that to Jesus. Just as an example, uh, Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, is a citation of Joel 2. Uh, and in the context of Romans 10, the Lord there is Jesus without doubt. And yet, in the context of Joel 2, which is the citation, uh, it is Yahweh of the Old Testament. So that is just one example. And there are many that we will see where references to Yahweh in the Old Testament were used by the apostles as references that directly uh, pertain to Jesus, which is another proof that uh, to them there is that uh, identification of Jesus with Yahweh. Pastor, paano naman po yung uh, nung inannounce ng angel na darating ang Messiah through uh, divine conception? Uh, di ba po ginamit yun, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and Mary? Yeah, but uh, that, that angel is a real angel because he introduced himself as Michael. The uh, Michael you know, in Luke 1 uh, and therefore we should not draw from that an identification with the Malach Yahweh of the patriarchal period from uh, Joe, the Kaza, as you were saying, God human as the final identity of Christ, which is expressing John 1.1. 1, 1. So we should be careful saying, um, should, we should be careful uh, saying only divine or, well, yes, God, but John 1.14, not John 1.1, 1, 1, John 1.1. 1, 1 is Jesus as God. In John 1, 14, that's where we are told the word who was God in John 1, 1 became man. From the time on, in, from the incarnation, uh, which starts with the conception in Mary's womb, uh, the son of God is divine human, God man, from the time on until now and for eternity. From Join, Dipa. Is the God man nature of Christ already in the Old Testament revelation? You, you mean if he already was God man in the Old Testament? No. But the fact that the prophecies pertain to a man like servant of the Lord, the servant songs of Isaiah is, and he is called there man of sorrows. So he was man. Uh, they expected a human Messiah, but with other references such as what we just now reflected on the Malach Yahweh, identified with Yahweh, yet differentiated from him. So they would, uh, the apostles, put your eyes, you go back to the Old Testament now with a Christian reading of the same passages that you once understood in a Jewish way. And one Christian understanding is that he was, uh, the Messiah is God-man. But that does not mean to say, even in the Old Testament, Jesus or the Son of God was already God-man. He only became God-man at the incarnation, which is New Testament.